He is 74, a Vietnam vet, and tonight he's without a home. This is a story about government benefits, but maybe more than that. It's also about people helping people. WSAB's Joanne Merrigan reports now that this man's story may not be so unusual. So you don't have any place to go right now or tonight? No, ma'am. I met Thomas Moody Tuesday morning across the street from a motel where he lived, but he was locked out of his room after he couldn't pay his rent on the 1st. I have been asked to leave. Like I say, I'm a diabetic. All my medication and everything is in the building. Ironically, there are flags flying on this lot as Moody looks across the street. The Vietnam vet says it's tough to be his age and scared about where you'll sleep. He admits he's behind on rent, but says it's due to mix-ups and how VA benefits have been processed with direct deposit. So I told him I hadn't received a check. And they said, we're well, working on it. That's all you can do. We were able to contact the Salvation Army on Moody's behalf. His steps were slow as he approached the building around noontime. It had already been a hard day. This is the first time I've ever been in the Salvation Army or stuff like this but I didn't have no other place to go. Tykea Gibbs is kind, saying there are just a few open beds, but Mr. Moody is welcome. So just to provide some basic needs for the night and then tomorrow get started on what else we can do for him. But first comes lots of forms and Mr. Moody has to fill them all out. And then he waits. He says when you're old and you need help, you have to get used to that. Gibbs does promise to put him in touch with a counselor who can sort out his VA benefits. And she says they're seeing more vets. We are seeing an influx of vets coming into the shelter. So we are servicing more homeless vets every month. Later, Gibbs shows Mr. Moody where he'll sleep. He came with just the clothes on his back and he's tired and a little discouraged, but he says the fact that someone seems to care makes a difference. Joanne Merrigan, WSAV News 3. The Salvation Army says it's now seeing 15 to 20 homeless vets every month, many of them young, but some older like Mr. Moody. And by the way, they were able to get Mr. Moody's medication later today and they promised to put him in touch with more services. For veterans. Charity scam has several people filing police reports tonight. That's after some low income women say they were promised help with rent and utilities if they just paid an upfront fee. Well, they called consumer reporter Joanne Merrigan and she's here now with more. Joanne. Yeah, that's right, Russ. It's still not clear what services this reported charity was providing, but it promised help to those who need it the most. Now some of those women are coming forward saying the services have not materialized. You give me $30 and I'll take care of your $975 like bill. Cheryl LeBond says that's what many low income women were promised by a charity that operated out of this home near Ogeechee Road. These poor innocent women that's been victimized with uh, vouchers that are not valid. LeBond says women were told they could get utility and rent vouchers if they paid a fee and she says many did. 50 to 100 the days that I was here. Uh, yesterday when I left, there were about 20 ladies waiting in line. He would just do these on his computer and give them to women? Yes. The vouchers don't look official, and according to LeBon, who worked for the charity for about a month, they're fake. Savannah um, Electric or Georgia Power, whichever one, they said that uh, these are null and void, that he has not been registered with the Secretary of State as a nonprofit organization since 2005. The charity Making a Real Change has a website and features a picture of Daniel Elvin, who many women say they dealt with. The charity promises help to the elderly and homeless. While most did pay $30, this woman says she gave the charity $600 yesterday with the promise her rent would be paid. And I say I was walking out on faith, thinking that this, was, this man was legit. You know, he, he talks a good game. He talks an awesome an awesome game. Do you think a lot of women believed him? Yes, we did. Well, we weren't able to ask Mr. Albin about any of these allegations. That's because he's not here. We were told this morning that he probably left town. Word is that Alvin left this morning for Augusta or Atlanta. I got a, I got a uh, fake paycheck. Okay. Uh, Bank of America already has it on file. They said it is a federal fraud. Jeffrey Stanley, who says he worked as a security guard for the charity, filed a police report today after his check bounced and we found police on scene at the house after complaints from others. I'm going to file a police report. Um, first of all, these fake vouchers, this is fraud. 
Well, we did check with the Georgia Secretary of State's office today and found that making a real change does not appear to have been active since July of 2005. I also called the phone number listed on the website to try to speak to Mr. Alvin, but the calls wouldn't go through. Meanwhile, this may be a good time to point out that most charitable organizations usually don't ask for money up front in exchange for services. Joanne Merrigan, WSAV News 3. This is WSAV News 3 at 6. So he says that he is a registered charity and he has helped people. Is that true as far as you're concerned? No, he, he's a scammer. He's a, a, he's a scammer. More concerns tonight from low-income women who say they've been ripped off and we continue to investigate the man running it all. Good evening. It's Thursday, August 8th. I'm Joanne Merrigan in tonight for Tina Tina Shaw. And I'm Russ Friesinger. Thanks for joining us. We begin tonight with more concerns about a local charity. Is it really helping low-income women? Well, last night I told you that some women who said that they could afford it the least said they had paid fees in return for the promise of getting utilities and rent vouchers. Well, the man behind the group denies that he has scammed anyone, but he has been in trouble with the law before. I spoke with Mr. Alvin. He told me to come out. Comedy Crawford says in late July, she was desperate to pay a utility bill of $1,000. I gave him $500 cash on the 29th of July. Crawford says Daniel Alvin, from making a real change, promised to pay her utility bill and gave her a voucher. The voucher he's printed up was fake. I mean, just fake stuff. Everything was fake. Nobody got any help. I myself did not even get any help. Yesterday, several women, including one who said she'd given the charity $600, went to the home where the charity had been operating, saying as many as 50 women, maybe 100, had given Alvin upfront fees. Alvin wasn't there. Ironically, today we received a donation letter in the mail from making a real change with two phone numbers listed. I called one and Alvin answered. I'm looking for Daniel Alvin. Alvin said the women were wrong, that he was a registered charity, although we couldn't find current records confirming okay, we'll that. Be happy. I'll be happy to take the names of the people you helped. Alvin refused to give me any names and said his lawyers would contact me, but I received no calls. We did find out that in 1997, Alvin pled guilty to eight counts of theft by deception in Liberty County. He also pled to deposit fraud that year. In November of last year, he was charged in Chatham County with theft by conversion. A booking photo indicates it is the same Daniel Alvin that appears in the charity website. Alvin was on probation for this charge. He's a fake. He's a phony. I don't understand. This man is on probation. He just got out of jail for doing the same thing. Why? I don't understand what's going on. Well, police confirmed they are investigating Daniel Alvin based on the complaints of some of the women. Late this afternoon, we confirmed with the Georgia Secretary of State's office that Daniel Alvin did have a charity called Making a Real Change registered, but that was dissolved eight years ago in 2005. A Secretary of State spokesman told us there was no other registration since that time. 